All right. So the next step is to figure out how do we turn this into a compelling story? How can we combine our ideas, our body movements, and our, our gestures and stop motion to tell a story using the Stop Motion Studio app? Yeah, so I am now coming to you <laughs> from my phone. So you're going to start by clicking on New Movie. Here I am. Cool. <laughs> um, so we're just going to adjust some settings and then we can start making things. So the first step would be to click on this settings gear in the bottom left. And this first setting you're seeing is frames per second. And this is essentially how fast do you want each frame of your stop motion to, to play. Typically in film and video, they're working between 24 and 30 frames per second. But I think for the sake of this project that we're doing here today, I would probably keep it around five, but you can always speed this up or slow it down um, if you want it to be at a different frame rate. The next choice for you to make is, is aspect ratio. I'll probably keep it at 16.9, which is like a standard ratio, but feel free to do something different if that's if that makes sense for your for your project. And the other setting is just about resolution. In the free version of the Stop Motion Studio app, HD is the which I'm assuming, I guess I don't specifically know what HD means. I guess that's maybe 1920 by 1080 is, is all you have in the free version of the app. And then the next setting that I would adjust is playback. I have decided to loop my playback because I'm kind of thinking of these as um, continuous loops. So after you've shot it, when you watch it, it will jump right back to the beginning and keep playing over and over again. So the next place I'm going to go to is this camera icon in the top right. This is allowing you to adjust your camera settings and see what it will look like as you're building in the in the app. So we can go down here to these like knobs in the bottom right. So right now I have my front facing camera selected. Um, you could also use your rear or a different camera depending on how you want to um, how you want to create your animation. For mode, I have been working in auto lock. I would either recommend like auto lock or manual. You basically, you just don't want the exposure settings on your camera to change while you're in the middle of shooting it because then it will, it will look it almost it almost had like a flickering effect because some frames will be brighter than others. So I've done auto lock because I think it's pretty simple. And then it also gives you this exposure option um, where you can kind of over or under expose the image depending on how you want to how how you want to work with it. But feel free to go into manual if you like if you want to adjust your shutter speed and your ISO. Have at it. <laughs> So the next thing to think about is this little slider here, which probably looks like it's not doing anything at this current moment, but this is basically what allows you to see what you've done previously. It allows you to line up with like a previous shot, right? So if I took a photo of myself right now, right? Now I'm kind of seeing the ghost of who I was previously, right? So I can see less of that or more of that. I've kind of been keeping it around 50%. And I think the real trick to making your stop motion feel seamless is really trying to line things up, right? So if I was trying to do something, if and my face was stationary, maybe I would want to have my eyes in the same place every time, you know, like maybe my expression changes, but my eyes are perfectly lined up so that it feels like a clean movement from step to step. And the last thing that I would adjust is this timer here. And it's kind of up to you and how you want to work. The timer is basically just how long of a gap is there in between taking the last photo you've taken and the next photo. So in this example that I'll show you of mine, I set a five second timer because that was enough time for me to quickly move. If there's a lot of adjustments that need to happen between each frame, maybe you'll want more time or maybe you'll want to manually click the button each time. It all just depends on what it is that you're, um, that you're hoping to make. Once you've made your sequence, you can just click on it and you have the option to export. You can export it as a movie, as an animated GIF, which is what I'm recommending, but you could also export it as individual images and then feel free to do what you like with it. So here's an example of a little loop that I'm in. 
So I decided to put my phone on the ground and use the sky as a backdrop. Yeah, and this is just like a really silly example, but I'm really curious about, you know, what would it mean to bring your full body into it? What if you did it in front of a screen? What if you had different sheets of paper that changed? What if you sat in a computer chair and spun around? Like there's so many different options to kind of figure out how to how to take this idea and, and elevate it and reinvent it and play with it in so many different ways. So I want you all to run free, go outside if that's something that you're able to do. If you're not able to go outside, I'm sure there are plenty of different objects and things that you can play with inside of your home. Get creative. Don't be too precious with it either. Like I think as you're making it and as you're playing with the app, you'll learn more and more about what works and what doesn't work. And you can always go back and hit play and see, um, see what you've done to see what was working and maybe what wasn't working. And I think, you know, I've also chosen to build these things on a stop motion studio app. I'm sure that you could probably do something like this on TikTok, but I also think it's really important to make things for ourselves and to make things outside of a context where we're wanting to get feedback from other people. Like I think at the end of the day, it, this is about self-portraiture and about our own exploration. So I think it's important to, to make things without an expectation that anyone needs to see them. So thank you all for joining me for this um, collab module. I hope you all can make some cool and fun things and I'd love to see what, um, what comes out of it.